Okay, so what's the deal with all these other radio services besides amateur radio? Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we look at the fun electronic toys, tools, and gadgets. Please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. When it comes to radio communication, there is more than just shortwave listening and ham radio. There are a couple of categories within the FCC rules known as Part 95 radio services. They are the Family Radio Service, or FRS, and the General Mobile Radio Service, or GMRS. In this video, we'll take a quick look at each service and explain how you might be interested in using one of them to solve your particular communications problem. These two services allow you to transmit from your radio without having to take the tests associated with amateur radio, which is regulated under Part 97 of the FCC regs. As you may know, I'm a ham operator, so my bias is directed toward amateur radio. But there's a reason why there are other radio services out there, and one of these services might be just what you're looking for, for you to fill your particular need. As you move from FRS to GMRS in Part 95 to amateur operations in Part 97, the government grants you more privileges as you move up the ladder. In this case, privileges simply means more flexibility and permissions when operating. Let's start with FRS. FRS is the entry-level radio service in the UHF band. Radios are restricted to a maximum of 2 watts of power on channels 1 through 7 and 15 through 22. Power is limited to one half watt on channels 8 through 14. Speaking of channels, both FRS and GMRS radios operate on channels. Unlike ham operators who can operate on any frequency in an authorized band in most cases, Part 95 radios are limited to specified channels that are assigned to a particular frequency. These frequencies are in the UHF band between 462 and 467 megahertz. Besides having limited power, FRS radios are not allowed to have detachable antennas. That means that FRS radios are basically handy talky style radios. As the name implies, FRS radios are designed for family use. This means you could use these to keep in contact while driving two vehicles to a particular destination, or give them to the kids to play with, or keep your party connected when out camping. I have a set of these radios that allows my wife to help me when I'm backing my RV into a campsite. Low power translates into short range for these small radios. A big pro if this style radio meets your use case is cost. You can get a pair of FRS radios for less than $30. Now, let's take a look at the GMRS service, which is a step above FRS. One big difference with GMRS radios is the need to get a license. Unlike ham radio, there is no test. You simply register with the FCC and pay the license fee. The license applies to all people in your immediate family, to include grandparents, grandkids, brothers and sisters, and so forth. As this is recorded, the fee is $70 for a 10-year license. The FCC has recently announced a new fee structure with a new fee of only $35 for 10 years, so it may be worth waiting to get a GMRS license, depending on when you see this video. 
the license gets GMRS operators a few more operating privileges. The big addition is more transmitting power. GMRS channels 1 through 14 are shared with FRS operators. GMRS channels 15 through 22 allow up to 50 watt transmissions. This chart shows the channel assignments and max power allowed for both FRS and GMRS radios. The usage column also provides some insightful information in terms of how each channel can be used. Now, that doesn't mean a GMRS handy talkie will output the maximum power on those upper channels. Those limits are more for mobile or base stations where the antenna is placed a safe distance from the operator. GMRS radios can have a separate antenna and you'd want to place it a safe distance away from the operator to avoid negative health impacts from the RF energy. The other big addition in GMRS privileges is the ability to own and use a GMRS radio repeater. A repeater is a special radio station that immediately rebroadcasts what it receives on its input channel on a second output channel. In the GMRS world, that output channel is 5 MHz below the input channel. This is referred to as a minus 5 or negative 5 offset. Handband repeaters work similarly. This can get pricey, however, so a typical user is unlikely to put up a repeater on the air. So why would you care about a repeater? Good question. Repeaters expand how far you can communicate. They do this in one of three ways. First, repeaters have high power transmitters. They often operate at the limit allowed by the rule. Next, repeaters are usually set up on high hills or buildings, giving them a larger, clearer line of sight. UHF radio waves generally travel in a line of sight. The third is geometry. A repeater allows someone on the edge of the repeater coverage to the north to communicate with someone on the edge of the repeater coverage to the south. This can potentially double the radio's range. Repeater owners can decide whether to publicize their repeaters and allow others to use them or not. The last feature I need to discuss is what is called CTCSS, or Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System, and its digital counterpart, DCS, or Digital Coded Squelch. While different, these two systems accomplish the same thing. When you look at the spec sheets of various FRS and GMRS radios, you'll often see them referred to as privacy codes. These systems broadcast a sub-audible tone or digital code that opens the squelch on the other radio set to the same CTCSS or DCS settings. What that means to you is that you'll only hear transmissions that broadcast the code. When you set up your group's radios to the same channel and code, your group will not hear others' transmissions on that channel and others on that channel won't hear yours. If the radio doesn't hear or receive the tone, it ignores the signal. While this limits who hears your transmissions and vice versa, they are not truly private as any radio set to that channel and tone or code can receive the transmission. Now, let's take a look at some use cases to give you an idea of why you might want to use radios in this Part 95 radio service. FRS use cases are pretty easy to come up with. I've already mentioned using inexpensive FRS radios as a way to keep track of family members while out camping or in large settings where getting back together once separated might be difficult. I also mentioned using FRS radios in a trailing vehicle or when caravanning with several other vehicles. Since these radios don't require licensing, they might simply be fun kids' toys to keep them occupied in a radio-enhanced game of hide-and-seek. GMRS use cases simply build on the FRS cases. 
Many GMRS handy talkie radios will transmit at 5 watts, providing you with more range than a 2 watt FRS radio. This makes them handy for family businesses where communications within a warehouse or other large structure is important. Another example is the use by a group of outdoor enthusiasts. While each family group would require its own license, the common channels would allow hikers, four-wheel drive enthusiasts, and hunters to stay in contact with each other, especially where cell phone service is spotty. Since the entire group is on the same channel, the radios allow communications with all group members at the same time, unlike cell phones. Since the license is a fee-only license, your buddies can all get licenses without having to pass an amateur radio operator's test. Last, these radios are favorites of various survivalists and those who refer to themselves as preppers. Since some of these radios also receive standard FM broadcasts and weather channels, they can be a source of important information in an emergency. As we wrap up, Let's talk just a second about what are legal radios for FRS and GMRS. Basically, an FRS or GMRS radio should only display channels 1 through 22 and perhaps the ability to scan FM broadcast stations and weather stations. Radios such as the Baofeng UV5R series of radios and other radios marketed to hams must not transmit on FRS or GMRS channels. Even though they can be programmed to transmit on FRS and GMRS channels, such operation is contrary to the rules. To transmit on a GMRS channel, a ham would need a GMRS license and to use a GMRS Part 95 certified radio. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.